On June 7th, 2020, dancers from around the world came together on Zoom to visit and chat and to dance through a shared repertoire known as the Dan Fury Irish Step Dances. It had been three months since the coronavirus pandemic had shut down all gatherings, including dance classes, workshops, and festivals. Members of this group were missing each other. Some of us were curious about trying to meet up online and to dance together in this new way. The meeting was hosted by me, Kieran Jordan, in Boston. Over 70 people attended, including dancers from Ireland, the UK, Germany, France, Ukraine, Japan, Canada, and all over the United States. We were welcomed by a musician and dancer who has been a teacher, friend, and inspiration to all of us, Michael Tuberty in Dublin. Veronique, can you hear me, Veronique? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, say, say something on behalf of all the Breton people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very enjoyed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new experience for most of us, for all of us, I think. Well, I'd like to say hello from Hawaii. I think I'm the only person here in Hawaii. Yeah, and I, I had the pleasure of dancing with Michael last year when he visited Osaka. Yeah, no, 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 no. So uh, I met you once on the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice to meet you again. <laughs> yeah, very nice, thank you. Hello, Tamiko. Hi, hi Michael, hi Noah, hi Martin, <laughs> hi Martin. <laughs> good, good. Hi Annette. <laughs> you have to dance too, it's no use just watching, you have to dance. <laughs> Sometimes my right. internet connection uh, uh, is breaking and stopping and therefore it's for me a little bit difficult to, to uh, continue dancing. Okay, okay. Well, do, do your best. I do my very best, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. This is Barbara from Aachen in West Germany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started dancing with Michael Tuberty in 2011. Michael was over in the US on a holiday, visiting friends and playing a few small concerts up and down the East Coast. A fiddle player in Boston contacted me to see if I would like to host a concert for him at my dance studio. I was familiar with Michael's music. He's a renowned traditional Irish flute player and he was one of the founding members of the Chieftains. And I was also aware that Michael and his wife, Celine were involved in old style step dancing. I agreed to host a concert and a music session, but I knew that a dance workshop especially would be the perfect thing for my studio, Kieran Jordan Dance, which at the time was based at a venue called Green Street Studios in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My community came out in large numbers that night. Some were friends or musicians who had met Michael in his travels over the years. Others were young musicians who were eager to play with him for the first time. But most were my dance students, adults of all ages, who are passionate, as I am, about traditional old-style Irish step dancing. We learned a dance called Single Time, which is one of the dances that Michael and Celine had learned from Dan Fury. Heel down. Top, heel down, toe down, heel down. Top, heel down, toe down, heel down. Top. It can be done as a solo dance or with a partner or with any number of people in a group. There's a circular step, like a refrain, that you repeat in between each of the main steps of the dance. That movement is called round the house, and when you dance this, it almost feels like a moment of set dancing within the overall step dance. No matter what's happening with your feet, like if you messed up the step before, or if you can't remember the one after, you join together with everyone on that circular part. And it really gives you the feeling of being part of that circle and dancing together as a group. That was the beginning of my friendship with Michael Tuberty, and that was how I became connected to the Dan Fury dance group. Round the house, good man. What are you going to dance for us? Priest needs boots. Priest needs boots. <laughs> oh, yes, right. And Mick Tuberty, now. The Priest needs boots is a sort of a famous 
set piece. It is hardly done anymore now, so this is going to be a treat. Watch it. Fury was um, a dance teacher from Labashida in West Clare, and he began teaching our group in the early 90s at the Willie Clancy Summer School. And um, that time, I suppose at those first years in the early 90s, there were probably about maybe 20 people in the class. So uh, a lot of that initial group are still hanging around, uh, meeting up and doing those dances that we learned in the early 90s. And just because Dan was the teacher, well, we called ourselves the Dan Fury Group and we're always introduced as such. So yes, there, there are that original group. And then of course, as the years went on, it spread quite a bit between uh, new people joining, people seeing it being danced and wanting to join in. And uh, at this stage, uh, we have, people from everywhere, everywhere. It happened in, in 1987. We were in Milltown. Uh, I, I, had, I had started teaching, teaching flute there in Milltown. Maybe that was the first year. I might have been there in 86. But anyway, in 87, uh, Salian was there with me. And um, we, we happened to go. To, there was, somebody said there was a, a, a session on in some hall there and we, we went along to it and that was when we first saw Dan Fury and he he was playing and he had some neighbours there who were dancing and they were dancing the priest in his boots. I remember it well and um, we we were both looking at this and thought it was very very nice you know but um, but that was it but still the weekend after Milltown the last weekend of Milltown there was a the, the monster flower was on in Kilrush, and uh, we Kilrush is my hometown, so we were going down there, and believe it or not, there was um, there was a big session on at the back of the uh, in the square in Kilrush, and there were a big lot of musicians playing for the dancing, and I, I sat up with the musicians and played along, and um, as the, as the time went by, a lot of them were. Uh, putting their instruments away and going off they were getting hungry and they wanted to go off and get something to eat or drink maybe and um, eventually there were only two left on the stage and the two were Dan Fury and myself and that was that was the start of it really like uh, Salian, one, Salian wanted to learn a dance because there was an event coming up where she she did dancing when she was young up in Donegal but um, she had had it mainly forgotten so that she could she could do it if if necessary, but she said she'd like to learn a proper, you know, like, like to learn one of the old dances sure. and to be able to do, you know, do a dance of full hornpipe, say. So and Dan Fury was only too anxious for somebody to come and learn his dances from him in Labashida. So we started to go down to Labashida. And on, on our first visit there, uh, when Salian, there was just uh, Dan and Salian and myself. 
And when he, she got up anyway to learn the dance from him, and I was sitting down, but uh, that, that didn't suit Dan. He said, you know, you're going to be bored out of your mind watching us. So why, why don't you get up and try it as well? Uh, I said, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. You know? So, but um, he, he uh, made me get up. He encouraged me to get up anyway. So I did and tried it. And that's where it started. Do you remember which dance that was, the first one? It was a single time. Oh, wow. Oh, that's interesting because that's the first one that you taught to me and to my group. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, maybe that was the reason, like without, without thinking too much about it. It has a clear pattern, but as funny thing that the way he taught it was he didn't have to run the house. It was just all the steps. And um, it was only um, a few years later, I got alone with a video recorder and I went down and I, I made a, a recording of, his, of the dances that he could remember. And um, I recorded that one. And then uh, at the end, but we were talking and, and he said, of course you could, you could do around the house between the steps. So I said, uh, around the house, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's see how, what that looks like. And he did it, and gosh, I said, you know, that's, that really makes the dance. Noel Devery was another dancer who traveled down to Milltown Malbay, County Clare, for the Willie Clancy Summer School in 1989. He was taking part in the set dancing classes taught by Dan Fury. I remember Dan Fury was, he's associated with the La Bichita set, and I think the Paris set, and uh, he was teaching those sets in the afternoon, but it sort of came to notice that he was able to do step dancing and um, we could all see these lovely dances that he was doing and I suppose every time we mention Dan Fury now we should also mention his friend, um, his lifelong friend James Keane who was, was an equally good dancer. So the two men, I remember those two men in the class and um, I think it was, it was a combination of us being there looking at what they had to offer and we wanting to learn it. and. They were so happy to pass on what they had. And then, uh, very much important also was the Willie Clancy uh, Summer School facilitated this to happen. So by the time we all gathered again the following year, um, Dan and James had their own class and they were going to teach uh, the old style traditional step dancing. So for me, like the, the, I, was just, I was very lucky to be just there at the, at the initial stage. And uh, we had such wonderful years going down to Willie Clancy was always the highlight of the summer to go down there and immerse ourselves for the for the whole week dancing morning noon and night time. <laughs> Dan Fury died in 1993 but the classes at Willie Clancy week continued on taught by James Keane, Saline Tuberty and then Noel Devery. Anne Drum describes how the group expanded over the years meeting up around Ireland and even traveling together internationally to practice their dances and share each other's company. The Labashida community group started a Dan Fury weekend in August in honor of Dan. James was still alive at that stage. So that was another outing for the gang, if you like. The group, you know, they had a date. We knew what the date was in August. So it was. It continued on. I would say maybe as a social, and more, as well as the dancing to keep the dances going. And during the Willie Clancy Summer School classes, there were two helpers for Dan and James. They were um, Sadie Tuberty and Brenda Hogan, and they were a great assistance to us in breaking down the steps so that we could slowly f figure them. Dan and James would. Boom, dance and we and they were able to shuffle and tap and treble and kick and they were able to say it in English and we slowly slowly learned and then we said well we've only two places to go maybe we should oh um John Ma and Sheila McAvoy said we're always traveling down to meet you guys you know it's time you came to us and they started in Tarm and Fecken. In the meantime, James died in the 2000, Christmas Day in 2000. So say, uh, Michael uh, continued on and he was 
working in, he was not working, but he was doing a project on the, the famous telescope in Burr Castle. And he had a, a contact to have a room for us. And we another outing was to meet up in Burr every maybe eight to 10 weeks and it, for a day out, anything for a day out. And we could dance and, and uh, chat and catch up. And then Michael's fame fa and Saline's fame was spreading. So they were traveling everywhere. Michael had been to Japan and to America and to France and more people, if they were in Ireland, came and, you know, on the date, whatever the class was, they'd jump in or out occasionally. It carried on. We, we were in Burr and then the, the Burr contact, we finished up in Burr and then Noel had a class and in Tullamore and he said maybe we could uh, dance together in Tullamore. And again, people didn't want to lose contact because we wouldn't see each other normally in the course of a month maybe, but if we had a designated date, we could all meet up again, in addition to going to Milltown Abbey every year. Rieko Yamashita was studying in Dublin in the mid-90s. She met Michael and Celine Tuberty there at Connie Ryan's set dancing class. Soon after, she joined Celine's step dancing class, and she also took part in the Willie Clancy Summer School each year. From Celine, first dance I learned was Dan Fury's hornpipe, and then Priest and his boots. Because I was doing set dancing, I know the music, so it wasn't so difficult, but the steps are different, so we need to practice. But after two or three dances, I found it kind of comfortable to learn new steps. It's kind of relaxing. It's not kind of, you know, you, you need practice, but it's not like hard training or like uh, athletics. So you can enjoy and uh, we can talk between dances and socializing each other and because we do the same steps so we feel like doing something together so i think that's one of, it's a solo dance but still we are doing the same thing and i think that's the kind of uh, attractive part of step dancing down, down, down. Kasia Benden, from Germany, met Michael and Celine on a visit to Dublin more than 20 years ago. After seeing them dance together, she was so moved, she organized a workshop for them in Blankenheim and later in Aachen. She has continued to host workshops for Michael and members of the group every year. It's traditional dancing. It is something very special and easy. And I've, on the very, very beginning, my idea about uh, Irish tradition, uh, Irish dancing or step dancing it was, of course, uh, something very spectacular, very sportive. And I thought, OK, in the age of 30, it's no problem to dance, it, but I would love to dance when I'm 80 or 90. And I thought this traditional step dancing, uh, it could be something I'm, I can go on with. And so it was maybe something special to the music I love, the, the way to dance, 
which is very social too, even if it's solo dancing. So it's what I really love about and many Germans or maybe foreigners wouldn't be able to start because they would think, oh, it's much too difficult, it's complicated and I don't feel well when I don't do it properly. So they never let uh, somebody feel that he's not welcome or maybe bad or you shouldn't. Everybody's welcome. So it's something very special. In between their workshops and visits, Kasha and so many others have been able to keep learning the Dan Fury steps through Michael and Celine's instructional videos and Michael's extraordinary book of dance notation published in 1998. Because he loves this music and he's so, so diligent to find the dances, to write them down, to find out how to know them for us. That everybody, even after 10 years or five years watching, I am still watching Michael and Selim dancing on their first recordings just to help myself to remind on. There was finally... 2007, when uh, Celine made it, well, the two of us, she wouldn't do it on her own at that stage. I had to dance with her. And it was just as well that I had learned the dances. But mind you, for writing out the book uh, at the very beginning, I couldn't write down the dance if I didn't know it myself. So I had to learn the dances back then. So, um, and then as, as you know, she was developing Alzheimer's, and as, uh, as, as her memory began to, to fail, uh, she couldn't remember some of the steps or some of the movements, and I had to start helping her. So um, that made me sharpen up again. <laughs> mm. Because up to, up to that, I would just sit down and play, play for her teaching the dances, you know, which was very, very easy for me. But then I had to... You had to commit them to memory yourself. I had, yeah, I had, I had. But um, um, it worked out all right. I thought when she stopped teaching that, uh, you know, that would be the end of, of, of that. But um, people asked me to, if I'd carry on, and I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it for one or two workshops and see how it goes. And it seemed to go all right. So I still carried on. Meanwhile, here in Boston, my students and I were also learning from Michael's notes and videos, and his visits were continuing almost every year. We learned a new step or two each time he came. The interest among my students grew, and Michael became like a friend to all of us. In 2015, I was invited with my dance partner, Kevin Doyle, to teach and perform at the Willie Clancy Summer School. This was my first time meeting other members of the Dan Fury group. My first time in their welcoming circle, step dancing together, not as a performance, but just as part of that social community. Michael mentioned to me that some years earlier, the group had gone to France together on sort of a dancing holiday. And I said, well, why don't you all come to Boston sometime? The following year they did. They rented houses, brought their dancing shoes, they went sightseeing every day, and they danced at our Kaylee's workshops and events each night. I think the first time I really caught notice was uh, when the Dan Fury Dancers from Ireland came here to Boston and we had the event at the Wollaston Church. Um, you know, we got in a large circle and, and you probably did priestess boots and a slip jig. And I remember feeling like there's something really special happening here. I felt like I'm a part of something uh, really important. And it, 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 uh, it continues to make me feel like I wanna do what I can to keep the Dan Fury dances alive. After that, I knew that we would have to make a trip to Ireland in return. So in 2018, about 25 of us from the Boston area flew over together for the Willie Clancy. We met up on the Monday afternoon. We met Dan Fury step dancers from Ireland and from around the world. And we also had the chance to perform together in the Thursday night concert. But the highlight of that trip for me was a very spontaneous potluck supper. With almost no planning, all of us from the Boston group and the Irish group showed up at our dancers' little rental cottage with salads and chickens and pies. 
and after our wonderful dinner, of course, we had another session of music and songs and dancing. I think at that point, everyone could feel that this was like one big family. And also, as Michael says, that each of us is like a link in the chain in the step dancing tradition. You know, this repertoire exists, existed and persisted outside of the competitive step dancing um, world. Uh, Michael has said in the past that Dan Fury decided not to join up with this sort of federation of, of step dancing teachers and the commission. And because of that, this very rare and unique repertoire made it through time to us here, which is great. And there's a lot of dances that, you know, were thought to be extinct or, um, you know, a lot of them incorporate, like I said, the lead around or sort of a, um, a refrain, which is pretty unusual these days for step dancing. You know, I don't think it was unusual in the past, but uh, so the fact that Dan Fury was kind of a renegade, I guess, and <laughs> struck his own path means that we all get to enjoy these dances through Saline, through Michael, through you coming down to all of us uh, around the world, which is awesome. Well, I suppose we're, we're just coming together to dance for the pleasure of us. There's absolutely no competitive, competitive aspect to it at all. We, we just love dancing. We like the, I think we all love the idea that the dances that we're doing today is exactly the way it was danced. These dances were danced back generations before us, our ancestors. The very same steps. I think there's something very special about that in that I know music or uh, dancing has evolved so much and um, modern dancing and of course the very extreme river dance, it's fantastic dancing but it, I think maybe only for elite people, sports people, fit, fit people that can do it, young people. But the beauty of these dances, um, if you can walk, you can come into a class and you can walk out with a, you'll dance out with a step or two. It's quite reminiscent of uh, old times when, when people got together and there was a bit of music, there was a bit of singing, there was a bit of dancing and there was usually food or something nice. And I'm thinking of days in Tullamore, for instance, down in, in, um, in Noel's place, uh, in the little hall there. We have all of the above and the local people come loaded with trays full of, of home bakes and we have gallons of tea and uh, it's just lovely. Someone sings, someone maybe plays a tune, some people dance and we chat. And it's just so, it's so lovely. It's so reminiscent of, you know, what, what really was the full picture. And the fact that so many people um, know these steps, come together as a group really um, makes me very happy. And um, to continue that tradition of those steps and keeping them alive is something that really, um, yeah, it makes me extremely happy. Um, and they're beautiful steps. And I love that anybody, I mean, with Irish dance, anybody can do it. But with this type of style, I feel like really anyone can do it. I think what's definitely most important about the group and my encounter with them, that they are able and they are willing to share music and dancing with another people. They are not dancing and uh, learning for themselves, they are sharing, it's most important. All of this sharing and visiting most certainly would have continued if it weren't for COVID-19. When the pandemic shut everything down, we had to find ways to continue. After two online gatherings last summer, the group in Ireland decided to keep meeting on a monthly basis, with Noel Devery leading the Zoom. There's no substitute for dancing in person feeling the energy of the bodies beside you, moving in time together, breathing the same air and making rhythm with our feet. The lag time on the internet means that everyone except the leader has to stay muted in order to feel like we are dancing on time with the music. And the internet can be unpredictable and there can be all sorts of technical issues. When I first experimented with converting my own teaching to Zoom, I just wanted to close my laptop and cry I missed that feeling of togetherness in the circle, and I still do. But over time, the benefits of this have outweighed the challenges. We are still a community and an even bigger dance family. With Zoom, we are a circle of squares. Zoom has mostly been like a positive experience for me, partly because I moved away from Boston and I couldn't find any 
old style step dance teachers here or anyone doing dance theory here. So it's almost like the only outlet or only way I can connect to other dance theory dancers. And I, it's only after I attended those Zoom gatherings, I realized how many more people out there in the world are dancing the same steps as we are. And it's uh, really mind blowing and uh, make me more appreciate the dances we learn. For example, the people from Japan, we wouldn't see them every year in Willie Clancy because they can't come every year. And the people from Boston can't come every year, but maybe we can see each other every month now, which is just gobsmacking. And it's eminently suitable uh, to lockdown because you don't need another person. You know, you, you can you can do it on your own. How many other things, you know, can we do this with uh, hobby wise? You know that uh, you can you be living on your own. You, you as long as you have a, a square meter of space to dance on, you can do it. And it's wonderful. What would Dan Fury think of all this? I think Dan would be absolutely delighted with all this, with all the travel. He'd, he'd love that. But yeah, like he would have liked it. He would have loved it. Yeah, and I, 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 that's one of my regrets that he's not around to see where his dances have got to. You know, he wouldn't. Maybe he can see it in some way. Yeah, I, 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 I think he's up there, you know, guiding all this. So single time it is, and um, just make sure that you're on mute. Bye. Hello to all in Tullamore. Thanks for having you. And Westport. And Dublin. And Dublin. Bye. 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 Have fun. Bye. Bye. Dan for six. Bye bye, Tamiko. Bye. Bye, Michael. Bye, Michael. Bye, Lindsay. Bye. Bye, Annette. Bye, Bernie. Good to see you earlier. See you now. Bye, Michael. Bye bye. Bye. Same time, same place tomorrow night. Ha, 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 ha.